Hello everyone. As expected, this is a new video about how to set a Trivium system. Last time we talked about user interface. Now we will show you how to set a system up. <clears throat> the first thing to do is to add your Trivium controller URL in your web browser address field. The first part of the configuration is about system information, serial numbers with which allow you to identify product model and software version of this product. And finally, the IP address you can set with a DHCP or with a fixed IP address. The visualization part. This is about the different types of visualization you can set, whether a web visu, an iOS or Android app. The support available, support.trivium.com, is the main support available online with a wiki. It has a lot of technical documentation and solutions to issues you could have. System configuration. Basic configuration with language, the ability to activate or not the remote support by Trivium, the ability to protect or not this configuration page, to authorize your customer or not to access this page. Be cautious with this system as all these modifications could be dangerous. Some other settings as for example the ability to show or not the menu play now, play next, etc. to hide the setup menu in the user interface and finally the ability to rename tuner and stream source as you want. You can also define a clock, depending on the zone where you live, with an automatic NTP server or manually by selecting a city in the drop-down menu. Network. I recommend using a fixed IP address which you will define here with your router address, your DNS server address, and finally, the subnet mask. In the software update part, you can update your system. I can see there is an available update. We will see it here later. Updates are displayed for the controller and for the Trivium elements available in the system, like the touchpad for example. I can also click on the check button to check the touchpad setting. Zones and controls. Here we can define which are the different controllers available in your system. One controller here is defined and is the SC044 with, for each zone, the ability to change settings. For example, a living room zone. I can associate it to a tuner, define maximum volume for this zone, a maximum volume level for this zone when the power is on. If you want this zone to be available as airplay zone, don't forget to activate it. Click this box here, as you have to do for Spotify Connect. On this screen, you can change the name of the zone, or add a predefined name in the list with a small icon representing the room. You can also define sound usage for each zone with bounce, bass, and treble settings. 
high and low pass filters are available and the ability to fix the volume if you want to control it directly with an additional amplifier. You can set a small parametric legalizer with the default setting or with your own preferences. Here you can set each input available on the controller. For example, I activate the iPod on input 1, I can get the gain and associate this input to a particular zone. Finally, I can ask to use available triggers to make specific action. For example, when trigger 1 is high, I can set an action like start paging. Zone defining. Here you have some basic commands allowing you to control different controller zones and which can be useful to make basic working tests. In this tab, you can define zone groups. For example, in the new group, I decide to create one outside zone group. If I have several single outside zones and I decide that room three and four, which are my two external zones, are part of my outside zone groups. At this time, the new zone group named Exterior will be created in the user interface and will allow me to control those two zones simultaneously. In Control Unit, I have all my user interfaces which have been connected to my controller. Here we can see many of them because there are iPads, web browser, computers, and smartphones and you can add new ones too. But at the time you're connecting to the controller with an URL or an app, this device will be added in the list. Streaming services. Nothing complicated. Add your localization with GPS coordinates and TuneIn will propose the different radio stations available in your geographic area. You can activate AirPlay support and give it a password if you choose. You can also define a delay for volume increase. However, I don't recommend it because when you modify the volume level, it will create a short delay to implement the change. I also don't recommend using the field Show Trivium address IP input name. If you use it, you will first see the IP address of your Trivium device followed by the zone list. It is not very user friendly. Network input will allow you to define a time to deactivate AirPlay zone. If you have 30 seconds, like what you can see on my screen, then when no data are transmitted via AirPlay during 30 second zone, it will be switched off. In Network Announcement Repeat, you will define how AirPlay zone names will be displayed on the iDevice. Here it's set to 3 minutes, which is, in my opinion, enough, because you will not change the name of the zone every 10 seconds. Spotify Connect. Same thing than AirPlay. This allows you to have Trivium Zones available in Spotify app and to stream music from Spotify directly in Trivium Zones. InStreamer. This is a little device available at Trivium which allows you to bring back the sound from a decentralized device. For example, if you want to add your TV sound in the Trivium system to stream it through your house, you can add an InStreamer. InStreamer has analog and digital inputs and will make the sound of your device available in all Trivium systems. Music services. 
For Deezer, all you have to do is to add your Deezer username and password. And same thing for all the online music services. Here I have Tidal. I can add Spotify and Cobuzz as well, with the same simple configuration, username and password, nothing more. Music Library, Database. In the Music Library setup, you can search for a network resource, like a network hard drive. Here, I share domo concept backslash music. There is nothing in this folder, so you cannot see anything, but you know that the settings are exactly like this. Once you configured the network share, you can refresh the music index. Trivium is going to scan all your music library. You can also use an iTunes library or, iPo or iTunes playlist, and you can add web radio if the previous one I show you are not enough. FM stations. These are simply preset radio stations with predefined frequencies. If I want to add a new one, I just have to add the station name and the corresponding frequency. In favorites, you have all favorites I already added in the user interface. I have, for example, several favorites from Weezer and one from Tidal. Available presets for equalizers. Presets are already available in Trivium or presets you can add by yourself. KNX part. We will see this a little later. RTI part. You can activate it. My advice is to refer to a previous post on the blog. We already wrote about RTI and Trivium. Configuration principle remains the same. Finally, another important part is the maintenance. If you want to add a new controller to expand the system, you can assign it as a slave or a master. If you want it to work with the entire system, it is better to have one controller as a master and all the others as slaves. Why? Because it will allow you to control them easier from the master. It will make creating a group a much simpler ordeal. In the maintenance mode, you can also import and export configuration or make a factory reset or again create a snapshot. Snapshot is an image of your system. So when you have to reconfigure an entire installation, simply take the snapshot and restore it in case of failure. In Log and Warning, you have several tools to check that all is working in your system. For example, Zone Status, Keypad Status, Check Alerts, and System Diagnosis. All these tools are very useful in case of failure in the system in order to understand why this happened. After the controller setting introduction, let's take a look at the touchpad settings. In information section, we have the same thing that we already have in the controller setting, systems info, wiki, etc. The setup section, define language, kind of used for the touchpad, mainly for music control and mainly for KNX control and special commands. If you wish to know more about this, please see the documentation.
Time setup. Same principle as the controller. Even use an NTP server or set the time by yourself selecting a time zone. Network configuration. Here I used DHCP, but my advice is to use a fixed IP address. In the user interface parameters, you can define a few settings about the screen itself. Portrait, landscape, change icon types, and the background color. Page Editor will allow you to change page configurations on your touchpad. We can see here that eight pages are available, and each one can be configured as you want. In my case, I added a clock with the ability to change the widget size. Here is an example of a cooling controller for KNX. We will see this in the next video. And here I added the audio part, which will allow users to have some basic information about the music playing. All my other widgets are about KNX, except the one about the weather and another one with IP cam. We will see KNX widget in the next video. The current screen allows you to display the actual screen of your touchpad directly in the web browser. For example, here I selected Tuner Source. I refresh my screen and I have the tuner page of my touchpad displayed. I select tuner and after a refresh, I can see my stream change. This can be very useful in case of maintenance to see what the users see. Buttons are the ones I previously defined in the page editor and I can change the settings right here. Other Visu allows to, as it was demonstrated in the last video, display a web page instead of KNX widgets. But you have to know that the embedded web browser supports only the touchpad screen resolution 1024 by 536 in landscape mode and 600 by 960 in portrait mode. KNX. We'll see this later. Just for information, you need a KNX backslash IP router to have communications between Trivium and KNX. Timers. Once again, this is linked to KNX as a macro. You will see all this in the next video. Error report systems, backup and restore, and snapshots. Controller and touchpad settings are done. Now you can enjoy music in your room. I invite you to watch the next video for KNX settings. Thanks for your attention. Bye.